Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer on this Thursday, June 4th. As you can see, we have a new bulletin today for Ordinary Time. And as you may also have noticed, it's a very, very long bulletin. I believe it's about 23 pages. But do not worry. We are not going through the entire bulletin. Instead, we've added different options for how we're going to do sections of worship so that in this long season of ordinary time, we will not get bored of the repetition from every single day. So we hope you enjoy the options that we've added that we'll use, and we'll get to that later. But I'll go and announce before we start this section with multiple options, which option we're using. Okay, let us begin. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. <clears throat> oh, come, let us worship and praise. So for Psalm 95, we shall be using Melody 1. We will not be using the refrain that they have above, but instead we shall be Actually, never mind. We will be using the refrain. And we'll start with the refrain, refrain, and then I'll chant the verses solo using tone one for the psalms. Let us begin. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. For you, Lord, are a great God and a ruler above all gods. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord and Maker. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. <clears throat> for the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Nation. 
Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Our psalm for today is the 48th psalm. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion, true pole of the earth, the great king city. God in the midst of its citadels has shown himself its stronghold. For the kings assembled together, together they advanced. They saw at once, they were astounded, dismayed, they fled in fear. A trembling seized them from there, like the pangs of birth. By the east wind you have destroyed the ships of Teresh. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of our God, in the city of the Lord of hosts, which God upholds forever. O God, we ponder your love within your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches to the end of the earth. With justice your right hand is filled. Mount Zion rejoices. The people of Judah rejoice at the sight of your judgments. Walk through Zion, walk all around it. <clears throat> Count the number of its towers, review all its ramparts, examine all its castles, that you may tell the next generation that such is our God, our God forever and always. It is he who leads us. Father, the body of your risen Son is a temple not made by human hands, and the defending wall of the new Jerusalem. May this holy city be built of living stones, shine with spiritual radiance, and witness to your greatness in the sight of all nations. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Sirach. Now, the 42nd chapter and the 43rd chapter. Now will I recall God's works. What I have seen, I will describe. At God's word were his works, brought into being. They do his will as he had ordained for them. As the rising sun is clear to all, so the glory of the Lord fills all his works. Yet even God's holy ones must fail in recounting the wonders of the Lord. Though God has given these, his host, the strength to stand firm before his glory. He plumbed the depths and penetrates the heart. Their innermost being he understands. The Most High possesses all knowledge and sees from of old the things that are to come. He makes known the past and the future, and reveals the deepest secrets. No understanding does he lack. No single thing escapes him. Perennial is his almighty wisdom. He is from all eternity, one and the same. With nothing added, nothing taken away. No need for a counselor for him. How beautiful are all his works, even to the spark and fleeting vision. The universe lives and abides forever. To meet each need, each creature is preserved. All of them differ, one from another, yet none of them has he made in vain. For each in turn, as it comes, is good. Can one ever see enough of their splendor? The clear vault of the sky shines forth like heaven itself, a vision of glory. The orb of the sun, resplendent at its rising. What a wonderful work of the Most High. And noon it seizes the surface of the earth. And who can bear its fiery heat? Like a blazing furnace of solid metal, it sets the mountains of flames with its rays. By its fiery darts, the land is consumed. The eyes are dazzled by its light. Great indeed is the Lord who made it, and whose orders it urges on its steeds. The moon, too, that marks the changing times, governing the seasons, their lasting sign, by which we know the feast days and fixed dates, this light giver, which wanes in its course, as its name suggest, says, each month it renews itself. How wondrous in this change. The beauty, the glory of the heavens are the stores that adorn their sparkling the heights of God, at whose command they keep their place and never relax in their visuals. A weapon against the flood waters stored on high, lightening up the firmament by its brilliance. Behold the rainbow. Then bless its maker, for majestic indeed is its splendor. 
its bands of heaven with its glory. This bow, bent by the mighty hand of God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. And a reading from a discourse against the pagans by St. Athanasius. By his own wisdom and word, who is our Lord and Savior Christ, the O Holy Father, whose excellence far exceeds that of any creature? Like a skillful steersman guides to safety all creation, regulating and keeping it in being, as he judges right. It is right that creation should exist as he has made it, and as we see it happening, because this is his will, which no one would deny. For if the movement of the universe were irrational, and the world rolled on its in random fashion, one would be justified in disbelieving that what we say. But if the world is founded on reason, wisdom, and science, and is filled with orderly beauty, then it must owe its origin and order to none other than the word of God. He is God, the living and creative God of the universe, the word of the good God, who is God in his own right. The word is different from all created things. He is a unique word belonging only to the good father. This is a word that created this whole world and enlightens it by his loving wisdom. He who is a good word of the God, no, good word of the good father produced the good in all creation, joining opposites together and forming from them one harmonious sound. He is God, one and only begun, who proceeds in goodness from the Father as from the fountain of goodness and gives order, direction, and unity to creation. By his eternal word, the Father created all things and implanted a nature in his creatures. He did not want to see them tossed about at the mercy of their own natures and so be reduced to nothingness. But in his goodness, he governs and sustains the whole nature by his word, who is himself also God. So that under the guidance, providence, and ordering of that word, the whole of nature might remain stable and coherent in his light. Nature was to share in the Father's word, whose reality is true, and be helped to him to exist. For without him, it would cease to be. For unless the word who is the very image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, kept in its existence, it could not exist. For whatever exists, whether visible or invisible, remains in existence through him and in him. And he is also the head of the church, as we are taught by the ministers of truth in their sacred writings. The almighty and most holy word of the Father pervades the whole of reality everywhere unfolding his power and shining on all things, visible and invisible. He sustains it all and binds it together in himself. He leaves nothing devoid of his power, but gives life and keep, keeps it in being throughout all of creation and in each individual creature. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways to the prophets. But in these days, last night, God has spoken to us by his Son. We shall be using Melody 4, Blessed Be the God of Israel. Blessed be the God of Israel who comes to set us free and raises up new hope for us, a branch from David's tree. So have the prophets long declared that with a mighty arm God would turn back our enemies and all who wish us harm. 
With promised mercy will God still the covenant recall. The oaths once swore to Abraham from foes to save us all. That we might worship without fear and offer lives of praise. In holiness and righteousness to serve God all our days. My child, as prophet of the Lord, you will prepare the way to tell God's people they are saved from sin's eternal sway. Then shall God's mercy from on high shine forth and never cease. To drive away the gloom of death and lead us into peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord, who makes every day new. Especially, we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gift of relationship with others. For the communion of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. For the people and countries ravaged by strife or warfare. For all who work for peace and international harmony. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land. For all those suffering from the coronavirus. For all doctors and nurses, scientists, and frontline workers. For all the peaceful protesters that are demanding change to our system to end the sin of racism in this land. For our good officers that work to protect American citizens and keep order and peace. For all of our leaders and for all people in this country, that we can come together around this cause, around both the cause of healing from the coronavirus and the healing of the disease of racism, and not drive to another apart. Make us bold to be together and proclaim your good news. And make us bold to follow in your wills, in your will, and not turn away from you that we work and strive for peace and justice so that we love you and love neighbor as you call us to. The Lord Jesus Christ has given us the light of another day. In return, we thank him as we cry out, Lord, bless us and bring us close to you. You offered yourself in sacrifice for our sins. Accept our intentions and our work today. You bring us joy by the light of another day. Let the morning star rise in our hearts. Give us strength to be patient with those we meet today. And so imitate you. Make us aware of your mercies this morning, Lord, and let your strengths be our delight. All-powerful and ever-living God, 
at morning, noon, and evening. We pray, cast out from our hearts the darkness of sin and bring us to the light of your truth. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A mighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safety in this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Some quick announcements is that at 10.30 a.m. today, we shall be having Bible study where we will be studying the book of Esther. We invite you to join us for it's been really fun going down the rabbit hole of all, how all these books in the Old Testament tie together because they all happen at about the same time. So it's been really interesting peeling back each level and going deeper and deeper and deeper. So we invite you all to join us as we go through this interesting time. The link can be found on the St. Mark's calendar. Another announcement is that tonight, during evening prayer, we will be having a moment of silence as we remember the killing of George Floyd by an officer. And we uh, will have reflection, silence in it, as we remember all those that have been killed uh, through the sin of racism in this country, and we remember all those good officers that have been working hard that their names have been shamed because of a few bad apples. We invite you all to join us for evening prayer tonight as we remember those. Now for the blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Bless and preserve us. Amen. We wish you all a blessed day. We look forward to seeing you, hopefully, at Bible study at 1030 and for evening prayer at 730 tonight. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.